Hello and welcome to my channel. Thanks to Jennifer Chumesi Ankara from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana, for requesting for this video. Please, if you are new here, kindly subscribe to my channel. And if you have been watching my videos and you are not yet subscribed, please kindly subscribe for us to the mathematics community. In this lesson, we are going to look at derivative of powers of trigonometric functions using the chain rule. So join me as we go through them. Now, let us look at this. If y is equal to f of u and v and u is equal to j of v and v is equal to h of s are differentiable functions of u, v and x respectively, then the composite function y equal to f of j of h of x is also differentiable function of x. If this happens, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to v times the derivative of v with respect to x. Very, very simple as that. So you see the chain here. If du cancels du and dv cancels dv, you have dy on dx. We are going to use that to help us. I have a series of examples here to improve your understanding. So let's take this. I have y equal to cosine to the power 5 of 3x squared. Now, how do we use the chain rule here? And is this a composite function or a function of a function? Let's see. This is the same as y equal to cosine of 3x squared all to the power 5. So this is a function of a function. So here, if I let u to equal to the inner function, cosine of 3, sorry, yeah, cosine of 3x squared, this implies that y equal to u to the power 5. Now, let's come back to this. This is also a function of a function or a composite function because cosine is taking 3x squared. So here, if I let v to be equal to 3x squared, this implies that u is also equal to cosine of v. Wow. So let's go step by step. So we have 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. So let's see what happens. The derivative of y with respect to u is equal to 5 times u. That is, if we differentiate u to the power 5 with respect to u, we have 5 times u to the power 4. And this is the same as 5 times what is u? u is cosine of 3x squared. Then we rank power 4. So this is simply 5 times cosine of 3. Okay, since we have power 4, let's put it in brackets. So it's the same thing. Okay, now let's find dv on dx. This will give us, if we differentiate 3x squared, we get 6x. And let's find du on dv. If we differentiate cosine of v, we get negative sine of v. And what is v? v is the same as 3x squared. Wow. So, here, the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to what do we have? We have dv on dx times du on dv times dy on du. 
I've rearranged it this way because the VBS is just 6x. So it's just simple for you to bring it in front. You know, multiplication is commutative. So if you interchange the position of this, the answer will still remain the same. Right? So here, we are going to have 6x times du given minus sine of 3x squared dy du 5 times cosine of 3x squared all to the power 4. So this 5 will multiply the 6x to give us 30x. So we have our dy on the x is equal to 30x and it's negative here. So you have minus 30x times sine of 3x squared. You can put it in the bracket, the angle, or you can leave it times cosine of 3x squared. But here we have to the power 4. Since we have to the power 4, then you can bring the power 4 inside. So we can write it as minus 30x times sine of 3x squared times cosine to the power 4 of 3x squared. You can still put this one in brackets. Wow, that is very, very nice. So use this approach. Let's take the next example. And I hope it is improving your understanding. Kindly subscribe, like, share, and leave your comments. Now let's take this one. What I have here is um, I have y is equal to square root of secant of square root of x. So how do we solve this one? So this, you have y to be equal to secant of square root of x to the power half. Wow. So we are using the chain rule. This is a function of a function. It's a composite function. So let's do it. If I let u to be equal to secant of square root of x, then y is equal to u to the power half. But this one is also a function of a function. So if I take v to be equal to square root of x, this implies that u is equal to secant of v. So now we have three functions, y, v, u. So if I take the derivative of y with respect to u, if we differentiate u to the power half, we get half of u to the power negative 1 out of 2. If we subtract 1 from this, we get negative 1 out of 2. And this is the same as 1 divided by 2 times square root of u. So there's negative up here. Where is the negative? Where did it go? Check this out. 1 on 2 times u to the power negative 1 on 2 is the same as 1 on 2 times u to the power positive half to the power negative 1. That's loss of exponents. To raise a power to a power, we multiply the index or the exponent. So I factorize the negative out. Negative times this will come back here. So I have 1 divided by a is the same as a to the power negative 1. So here, my a is u to the power half. So this is the same as 1 on 2 times 1 divided by u to the power half. And it's the same as 1 divided by 2 times u to the power half. And to the power half is the same as square root. So we have this as 1 divided by 2 times square root of u. Where is the u? u is secant of square root of x. So we take secant of square root of x. Wow. Wow. Now, let us proceed. We've done dy on du. So we can do du on the vein. So the derivative of u with respect to vein is equal to if we differentiate secant of vein, what do we get? 
you are going to get secant of vein, tangent of vein. So you get secant of vein times tangent of vein. And it's the same as secant of y is vein, square root of x. Square root of x, tangent of square root of x. So this gives us our du on the vein. Now let's find the vein on the x. The derivative of vein with respect to x is equal to 1 divided by 2 times square root of x. Just check it out. You've done this one already. So the same thing as that. Because here, it will become v equal to x to the power half. So it will go the same process as this. So this will become the v on dx. If you uh, differentiate x to the power half, you multiply this by half, you have half of x subtract 1 from the half, negative 1 on 2. So the same thing here. It's just that the u is now x. So we come back to this part. Okay, so now we can find the derivative of y with respect to x. That is dy on dx is now equal to check that this is the simplest one. So we take dv on dx first times the other one dy on du. Okay, let's take du on dv du on dv times <coughs> dy on du and you see that it's a chain dv will cancel dv du will cancel du so this now will be equal to oh, we have portion here so let's define this off this now will be equal to dv dx where is it we have it here that is 1 divided by 2 times square root of x. Very simple as that. You've done that one. Times du dv. And that is what we have here. Oh no. That's what we have here. Du dv. That is secant of square root of x times tangent of square root of x times dy on du that is 1 divided by 2 times square root of secant of square root of x as our dy on dx so this one simplifies to remember this is over 1. So 1 times secant of root x times tangent of root x times 1 will give us secant of root x times tangent of root x all divided by 2 times 2 is 4. So we are going to have 4 root x times root of secant of root x. Wow, now here we can just do simple simplification here. Saying that if I have root b times root a, the answer is the same as root a times b or root b times a. So here I can send this root inside. So if I multiply this x, I multiply what is inside. Remember that this root x and secant of x is one function so you cannot go and multiply root x by what the root x here no this root x can only multiply the square root of secant of square root of x so it will multiply the coefficient here and the coefficient here is one so x times one so we are going to get dy on dx to be equal to secant of root x times tangent of root x all divided by 4 times square root of x times secant of square root of x very very simple as that 
here B is X and A is secant of square root of X. So we multiply B and A and that is our final answer. Wow, let's take the next example. Now the next example, we are going to solve this one. We have y f of theta is equal to sine squared into bracket 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4. So here, this is the same as f of theta equals sine of 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4 all squared now if we let u equal to sine of 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4 then this implies that f of theta is equal to u squared now for the expression for u, we can write v equal to the inner function 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4. And this implies that u is equal to sine of v. So now we have 1, 2, 3. We have three functions. So let's do this. Here, the derivative of f with respect to u is equal to 2u. And what is u? So u is sine of 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4. Now, the derivative of v with respect to theta is if we differentiate 5 times theta cube, you get 15 theta squared. If we differentiate minus 2 times theta squared, we get minus 4 theta. If we differentiate positive 4, it's a constant, so we get 0. Now, the derivative of u with respect to v is equal to, if we differentiate sine v, we are going to get cosine of v. And that's equal to cosine of 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4. So now, our f prime of theta that is equal the derivative of f with respect to theta is now equal to we take one two three let's take the simplest one first the derivative of v with respect to theta times any of these the original function is in sine so let's take this first the derivative of u with respect to v times the derivative of f with respect to u. Okay, so this will give us 15 times theta squared minus 4 times theta, put it in bracket because you have two terms, times du dv, cosine of 5 times theta cube minus 2 times theta squared plus 4 times times 2 times sine so let me remove the bracket 2 times sine of 5 theta cube minus 2 theta squared plus 4 so we can rearrange that's 2 we we'll come and multiply the whole of this. So you can either multiply 2 by 15 by 4, or you can put 2 in front. So let's multiply 2 inside. So 2 or we'll multiply everything as so you have 2 times 15 times theta squared minus 4 times theta times cosine of 5 theta cube minus 2 theta squared plus 4 times sine of 5 
theta cube minus 2 theta squared plus 4. So if you like, you multiply 2 by 2 to get 30 theta squared minus 8 theta. But remember to put this in brackets because the answer is still multiplying the whole of this times cosine of 5 theta cube minus 2 theta squared plus 4 times sine of 5 theta cube minus 2 theta squared plus 4. Very, very simple as that. I hope you are enjoying this lesson. I am Mensa Augustine. Please kindly like, share, subscribe, leave your comments. Let's continue with the next example. Okay, so I've done this one. I've done this one. I've done the secant. So let's look at this one. I think I, I have f of x is equal to 1 divided by sine of 5x minus 2. So how do we do this? This is as f of x equal to sine of 5x minus 2 all to the power negative 1. So here, if I take um, f of x, if I take the inner function u to equal to sine of 5x minus 2, then I can write f of x to be equal to what? u to the power negative 1. Then for u, if I take v equal to 5x minus 2, then I have u equal to sine of v. So this is a composite function. Yes, it's a function of a function. So let me differentiate. First, the derivative of f with respect to u is equal to negative u to the power negative 2. And this is equal to negative 1 divided by u squared. Right? Yes. From indices, negative u to the power negative 2 is the same as negative u to the power 2. Then you factor the negative 1 out. This is one negative 1 on u squared. This negative 1 is not what we have here. No. If you have u squared to the power negative 1, it's the same as 1 divided by u squared. So check that one out. This negative one is not what we are seeing here. This negative is multiplying this one. That's what we are seeing there. So this is the same as negative one divided by what is u? u is sine of 5x minus 2. So let's put our df on the u here. Now, if I take dv on dx, if we differentiate 5x, we get 5. If we differentiate negative 2, it's a constant, so you get 0. If I take du on the vein, if we differentiate the sine of vein, you get cosine of vein. Derivative of u with respect to vein is equal to cosine of vein. And what is vein? Vein is 5x minus 2. So now I can find derivative of f with respect to x, which is equal to f prime of x. So here, take the simple one first. Dv on dx times du on dv times df on du. And this is the same as 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2 times negative 1 on here yeah, I didn't bring the square yes we have u squared and the whole of this is u so we put the whole of this in bracket then bring the square at the top 
very simple as that. So sine of 5x minus 2. All squared. So remember, the whole of this is over 1. So we have our df on dx to be equal to negative 5 cosine of 5x minus 2 all divided by sine squared of 5x minus 2. Yeah, the whole of this question, you can bring the square here. Very, very simple as that. But remember this. You see that here, I wrote negative 1 here. Don't bring this negative 1 here. If you bring this negative 1 here, you will change it to the inverse function. Remember, you change it to the inverse function. Be very careful with that. You change it to the inverse function. And that is not what we mean. We have inverse function, that is. But write sine inverse of x. It is not equal to 1 divided by sine x. 1 divided by sine x is cosecant of x. 1 divided by sine x is cosecant of x. It is not equal to sine inverse of x. So take a very good note of that. Take a very good note of that. So sine inverse, sorry, sine of 5x minus 2 is equal to this. Or I can write this as secant, yes. If I have one divided by this, I can just write it as secant of this and then use it to go my way. So let's put it even in that form here. So you could have done this this way. By factorizing this negative one out to get this. Okay, let me do it, rearrange it here, neatly. In fact, I should have change this to secant and then go straight away but once I've done this I can leave my answer in terms of secant so let me take the original answer that's the derivative of f with respect to x is equal to minus 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2 times 1 divided by sine of 5x minus 2. See that we have square here. Okay, so this is the same as minus 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2 times 1 on sine of 5x minus 2. All square, remember 1 square is 1. So this is the same as minus 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2 times secant of no cosecant right it's not secant times cosecant of 5x minus 2 all squared and this is equal minus 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2 times cosecant squared of 5x minus 2. Yes. This answer can be written in this form. And the original question, where is it? This is the original question. f of x equal to 1 divided by sine of 5x minus 2. Since we are going to write f of x is equal to since we have 1 divided by sine of this angle, we could have done it as cosecant of 5x minus 2 and then do the differentiation from here. Do the differentiation. And if we have cosecant, our answer will now go to this way. Let's check that and see. If you are going to do this, you just take this. You differentiate the inner function. If we differentiate, okay, let me do it so that we see. I want to do it now, right? You see that the answer will be the same as this.
Let's put our answer here. Our answer for this is a minus five cosine of five x minus two cosecant squared of five x minus two. That's our answer. So let me clean everything from here. And then solve it as f of x is equal to cosecant of 5x minus 2. So here, if I let u to be equal to 5x minus 2, this implies that f of x is equal to cosecant of u. Wow, so here, the u on dx is 5. And df on du is, if you differentiate cosecant, you get negative cosecant of u, cotangent of u. And this is equal to negative cosecant of u. u is what? 5x minus 2. And you have cotangent of 5x minus 2. Wow. So let's see. The derivative of f with respect to x is now equal to du on dx times df on du. And this will give us 5 times this, and that is minus 5 cosecant of 5x minus 2 times cotangent of 5x minus 2. Are our answers the same? No. But you can make it the same. It's very simple. Check it here. I'm, I'm going to make it the same for you to see. I'm going to make it the same for you to see. Now, this is the same as minus 5. Cosecant is the same as 1 divided by sine of 5x minus 2. Yes. And this is cotangent. The same as cosine of 5x minus 2 divided by sine of 5x minus 2. Wow. So this is the same as minus 5 minus 5 will multiply everything at the top. So we have minus 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2 times the down ones will also multiply. So I'll have sine of 5x minus 2 all squared. That's what we have here. So this is the same as minus 5 times cosine of 5x minus 2. I think I changed this earlier, so I can just put in cosecant squared of 5x minus 2. I think when I was having this, I changed it to this form. So that is it. It's the same. Are you doubting? We have sine of an angle divided by cosine of the same angle is equal to tangent of that angle and cosine of the angle divided by sine of the same angle is equal to cotangent of the same angle so if you have difficulties in this check the description for um inverse sine function uh, inverse trigonometric functions how to simplify them Okay, I think I wanted to do uh, a lot of examples, but this example has dragged us uh, a lot. So let's keep it here as the video will be lengthy. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and leave your comments. Bye-bye.